So what is psychological safety? Psychological safety sets the foundation for other drivers of success. So when we're talking about motivation, when we're talking about innovation, you know, we need psychological safety for that to happen. So psychological safety is not something you do once. It's something we con you know, constantly reinforce because the environment is constantly changing. So we need to constantly reinforce psychological safety so that we can constantly have the tools that we need in terms of the kind of behavior that we have. So when we talk about psychological safety, like most of you rightly said, it is the extent to which we feel safe to express ourselves, to be able to speak up, okay? And this is something we need to do as a team because psychological safety is a, is a team um, phenomenon. It's something that happens within a group. So we need to come together and decide how we want to um, interact, how we want to collaborate, how we want to be as a team, because what we decide is then what guides us as a team. So it's a shared belief that we can actually take interpersonal risk based on um, the core protocols that we come up with. So if almost everybody works in a team, then we do need psychological safety because this is a team dynamic, right? It's a team phenomenon. And why do we work as a member of a team? It is because the environment is so complex. We, we keep talking about a VUCA world. It's volatile, it's uncertain, it's complicated. You need more than one person to satisfy a customer. Because we need psychological safety in a team, because we work in a team, we have a goal. And that goal is to create a fearless environment, an environment in which people can come to work, you know, fully, okay? So why do we need psychological safety? This is the reason why we need psychological safety. We want to be able to leverage capabilities of everybody in the team. Because remember, you would have what we call a cross-functional team. You will have different types of people from different backgrounds with different experiences, different age groups. And we're able to leverage the capabilities they bring to the team, okay? And we're able to navigate the VUCA world because we have all these capabilities within the team. We are able as an organization to have competitive advantage, okay? We're able to get our products and services speedily to the market. We are able to innovate. And of course, employee engagement is critical. When there's no psychological safety in your organization, in your team, people will disengage. And when we say people disengage, it means they are there physically, but they are not fully there. And you will not get the best out of them because the environment is not safe. So you have Sometimes, you know, environments where fear rules, okay? Environments where fear rules. Environments where there's so much status difference culture, you know, I'm the boss and what I say goes, okay? You do as I say. An environment where we have the ogre at the top mentality, the boss at the top mentality, okay? Syndrome. An environment where they don't want any bad news going up. They only want the good news. Okay, people are afraid to talk about the bad news. An environment where, you know, um, no problem, we, we, we will tell you what you want to hear. In other words, since we can't, you know, comfortably and freely um, communicate bad news or, you know, ugly news of the hierarchy, we'll filter that news for you and we'll tell you what you want, you want to hear as the boss. So psychological safety is important because we want people to come to work and be able to speak up. We want people to share ideas, however rudimentary those ideas may be. We want people to be able to report their whatever mistakes happen on time. I mean, like the saying goes, a stitch in time saves nine. We want people to be able to challenge one another, ask questions freely, and have radical candor. Radical candor, I'm sure some of you are familiar with that. This is where you are able to, you know, challenge people that directly give them feedback directly, but also show that you care. Now, if this can happen in your team, then you can confidently say there is psychological safety in your team. And when you have that, you can achieve amazing things. What psychological safety is not? Because some people think when you say the environment is safe, it means, you know what, we can do what we like. Um, performance doesn't matter. It's an environment of low performance and low standards or no accountability. Um, no, psychological safety is not about taking reckless risk. It is not at all. It is not about ignoring the rules and the constraints of the organization. So psychological safety is you giving me the benefit of doubt now, right here, right now. And trust is me giving you the benefit of doubt in the future. What a lack of psychological safety 
looks like. Now, this feeling of fear to speak is a common phenomenon, especially in hierarchical organizations. We still have them today. This is a very dangerous organizational anti-pattern. Leaders are too far from the shop floor. They should listen twice as much and be aware of the effects of their presence. Often, unfortunately, they are blind to this effect, and some actually lo love the fear they create. You be believe it or not, there are some people who are, you know, into this status difference thing, and they love the fact that their presence creates fear. Now, when we are silent, we gain nothing. Nobody gains. Nobody learns. The organization does not learn. The individuals don't learn. The team members don't learn. Insights are missed. Business opportunities, learning opportunities, all missed. Opportunity to improve, missed. Opportunity to mitigate risk, missed. Failures that could have been avoided happen, just like we just read from the um, NASA um, scenario. So who wouldn't like to work in a safe environment? Who wouldn't? I would. But for the most part, we want change, but we don't want to change. As an agile coach, we, we encounter this all the time. And that's our job to help people understand the need for change. And we all know that change is an emotional journey. And that's why we coaches, we try to help people, you know, through that emotional journey to embrace change and begin to, you know, face the realities and having, you know, helping them with the new behaviors and the new skills or competences that they need to, 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 to embrace the, the change. So how do we create psychological safety? You need to understand the nature of the organization, okay, in terms of their offerings. You need to understand what the challenges are, okay? The complexity of that organization, status different, hierarchy, you need to know how all that operates, okay? So that you know exactly how to go about it. You need to be sensitive to the criticality of your offering. So for example, in the hospital environment, it's a life or death matter. And as a leader, like I said, you take the lead. You are the influencer. So you need to set the stage and have the right communication. It is so important. Having the right communication, this is where inspiring speeches come in. This is where, as a, as, as a leader, you really want to uh, what's the word? be charismatic. That's what I'm looking for. A charismatic leader having that inspirational speech. So in a hospital environment, you're looking at 100% safety. That is the clear vision, simple, straightforward, understood. And you want to also understand the complexity of your organization, okay? Because if you understand the complexity of that organization, then you're able to communicate the need for psychological safety properly. Because then we are saying, you know what? This environment is complex. It's very complicated. We need each other. We need to ask each other questions. There's no way one person can know everything here because it's very complicated. So you need to get them to understand, you know, the complexity of their work environment and let them know the value they add despite all that complexity in order for them to key into the agenda of creating psychological safety. Share research statistics, for example, to say because there was no safety, this is what happened. When there was safety, this is what happened. Conflicting priorities. Sometimes we have organizations with conflicting objectives, okay? And you have departments working in silos and working at cross purpose. You want to make sure you get rid of silo. And of course, you don't want a blame culture. When something goes wrong, you want to do a post-mortem, but it's got to be a blameless post-mortem, okay? And of course, you want to change the, 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 the words, the, 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 the language. You want to change the language. And we'll, have a, we'll take a look at an example just now. And you want to do what we call a proactive inquiry through powerful questioning. When you say an environment is safe and then people say something and then the response is not quite positive, then it's as though you're just paying lip service. And it is important to know the different types of, um, of failure in order for you to know the kind of responses that is required. For example, preventable failure, maybe you need to retrain people. Complex failure, maybe you have a very complicated system and you need to improve the system. Intelligent failure, we're talking about environments where we, 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 we have very volatile kind of work, um, technology environment, where we need a lot of experimentation, which is the whole point of Agile. So if you're saying we're working in an innovative environment, maybe you have an, um, an innovative lab, then you really want to give them the latitude for failure because they are doing a lot of experimentation. And because they are doing a lot of experimentation, you need to give them that latitude for failure. Okay. 
I've talked about what a leader can do, but I've also said it's not just down to the leader, it is up to each and every one of us. Because like we said, we about 90 um, about 90% of us work in a team. So if we work in a team, it means we have a role to play to ensure their psychological safety, okay? So one of the things you can do when your colleague asks you for help, help gladly and be fully present. Help gladly and be fully present. Give them your full attention. In other words, active listening, okay? And how do we do active listening? You look people in the eye. You paraphrase what they say. You nod your head, you give eye contact, okay? Full attention, active listening. When you learn something new that can benefit the team or a team member, share freely. That's adding to psychological safety. Even when you disagree, just because we have an environment that is safe, doesn't mean we will always agree with one another all the time, no. But what happens? If as a team, one person does not agree or a team of 10 people, two people do not agree with the decision that has been taken, do you sabotage? Do you step back and be indifferent? Or do you disagree but commit? I mean, the mindset should be, okay, I don't quite agree with this, but I will commit and get the job done. If a colleague is quiet during the meeting, ask a curious question so that you give them the opportunity to speak up. When you have a team, you must have some kind of team agreement, right? You must have some kind of team agreement. In your team agreement, depending on the nature of your work, it can be anything. Obviously, context matters here. We want to be able to show respect to one another. We want to contribute you know, as much as possible in the meetings equally. We want to make sure everybody has a voice. In the meeting, we want to make sure our meetings are productive. We want transparency. We want to be able to remove impediments, have have you know, um, an agreement on how these are done. We make commitments as a team. Like I said before, when we uh, make, take a decision, sometimes everybody may not necessarily agree with that decision, but we, we commit nonetheless. We don't sabotage and we are not indifferent about it, okay? We commit to it, okay? Um, if we're working in an agile environment, we all know incomplete stories are not good. That's just an example for people working in an agile environment. We don't want negative gossip. It's damaging. And when we are brainstorming, which we will do a lot, okay, as a team, when we are brainstorming, when somebody says something, remember, when you are brainstorming, it's about sharing your ideas. When somebody says something, you don't want to say yes, but. Yes, but. No. Rather, you want to build on what someone has said. And this is what we talk about, non-negativity, okay? We have a shared goal. We are curious. Okay, and because we are curious, we are able to ask each other questions and nobody feels offended, nobody feels they are being probed because we have agreed that these are the protocols with which we're going to operate. We take ownership of things together. So we fail together, we win together, okay? And when we fail, really, it's feedback. When we fail, we do a blameless postmortem. We're thinking, okay, what has gone wrong here? We're not pointing a finger. Oh, it was Mary's fault. Oh, it was Andy's fault. No. Rather, we're saying, why did it happen? So there are three more questions in the group chats. One from Ian. Um, how do we use empathy to shape psychological safety? Empathy. That's a great question. Empathy simply means I need to walk a mile in your shoe, right? So if you empathize with people, first of all, it means you're even aware of their emotions. Okay, this is where emotional intelligence comes in. You are aware of their emotions and you are also aware of your emotions. And because you are aware of their emotions, you are then able to do the right things because the context will be different. When we talk about empathy, it could be empathy in any context. So based on that context, you then know how to approach the situation by putting yourself in their shoes and trying to have the right conversation trying to respond in a productive way and trying to formalize the right policies that will help that person. It could be a junior person. It could be somebody, you know, on middle, um, um, middle management layer. Empathy is so important. Otherwise, we may not, you know, respond the right way in terms of the, the emotions that is required.